Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pad tutorial. We are coding our Fruit Slashers game. And in the last video, we added the uh, splash animation to our game, right? But we haven't finished it yet. So we'll keep working on that now. First thing, uh, here on the game start, we are creating the orange splash, right? And that's our animation that plays whenever I press play in my game, right? But I don't want to create my animation whenever I start my game. And I also don't want to create my animation uh, in the middle of the game, right? So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna delete this orange splash from here on the, on the game start tab. I don't wanna create it there. I know it's working already, right? So I don't have to create it there to see how it looks like. And instead, I want to create it whenever I slice either a banana or a orange. Okay, I'm going to use the orange splash for both my banana and my orange. All right. So now we're going to go inside my fruit. And inside our fruit here, we're going to use something called a tag. So what is a tag? So with, with the tags, we can tag this fruit here and say if it is a, a banana or an eggplant or an orange or a pineapple. And then we can check for this fruit tag, and if it is a banana or an orange, I will create my orange splash, right? So first, let me create a tag here for my fruit. That the tag is basically uh, a variable, so I can say that self dot tag is gonna be something, right? But actually, here uh, we don't want to, we don't want to do it here actually because each fruit will have a different tag. So like each fruit has different points right so here on my banana because this is my banana png sprite right so if my number is zero i set the sprite to be the banana and i set the points of this fruit to be one and i also want to set this tag to be banana and i'll do the same here for the eggplant so self.tag equals eggplant and the same for orange, self.tag equals orange. And we also do the same here for the pineapple. So self.tag equals pineapple. There you go. So now each of our fruits also have a tag, right? Now we can go on the slicer in the loop tab. Here we can check. I mean, here we are already checking if we have pressed the left button and then if we collide with a fruit and if we collide with a fruit as a slicer, we are gonna get the exact fruit we have collided with and we are gonna increase our score according to the fruit's points, right? And we're gonna destroy the fruit. But before I destroy the fruit, I wanna see if that fruits.tag if that fruits tag is equals equals banana, then what I want to do is I want to create my orange splash at the same place as my banana, right? So if this fruit that I'm slicing has a tag that is banana, then I'm going to create my orange splash, right? But now I have to position this orange splash at the same place as my banana. So for that, I have to store this inside the variable. So I'm going to say that my splash is an orange splash. And this splash.x is going to be the same as my fruit.x. And oh, fruit.x and this splash.y is going to be the same as my fruit.y. All right. So now we can even test the game now. You can see that if I slice an orange, nothing happens. But if I slice a banana, you can see our animation playing there, right? Which is pretty cool. So I said that I want my orange splash to be created if I slash a banana or if I slash a orange, right? So what I could do here is I could check if this fruit uh, tag is a banana, right? And if not, then I check if this fruit dot tag is equals equals orange. 
orange, right? And if it is orange, then I have to do the same thing I did here. So I create a splash that is an orange splash and I position this splash on the same position as my fruit, right? So I would have three more lines down here that says splash equals orange splash and the splash.x is equals fruit.x and the splash.y equals fruit.y. So I'm just copying uh, whatever I typed here for my banana, right? Because it should work the same for my orange. So you can see that now if I stop and play my game, if I slice an orange, I also have the orange animation being played, right? Which is pretty cool. But we can do it in a better way here in our code. And I'll show you right now what is the better way. So for now, if we want to create the same splash for both my banana and my orange, then I'm creating here an if for my banana and a l if for my orange, right? But instead, what I can do is I will delete that l if code and I can check if my fruit tag is equals equals banana and before the colon, I can say or the fruit dot tag is equals equals orange. So now my condition, my if statement is checking for two things, not just one. So I'm checking if my fruit tag is equals equals banana or if my fruit tag is equals equals orange. So see that now we have a way more compact code that's better to see, right? And the code for both is the same. So that's why we can use it like this. But if we are going to create, let's say, a purple splash, then we would need another if, right? Because now it won't be an orange splash anymore. It would be a purple splash. So let's say if my fruit tag is equals equals banana or my fruit tag is orange, I create an orange splash, right? Else if, so L if, so if not, if not, if, if it is not a banana and it is not an orange, because think with me, if we get a banana, so is my fruit tag equals equals banana? Yes. So it already runs this code, right? If we get an orange, so is my fruit tag equals equals banana? No. Okay, so I have an or here. So I have two things to check, right? Okay, so then is my fruit tag equals orange? If so, then I can run the same code for both, right? If not, so if it is not banana and it is not orange, then it would check my L if here. So if it is not banana and it's not orange, so check for me if this fruit dot tag is equals equals eggplant. If it is eggplant, then I want to create a splash that is not an orange splash now, right? We want to create a purple splash. And then I would set this splash position to be the same as my fruits X and Y like we do here. And we do the same for the pineapple, right? We add the green splash and so on. I will not do it right now because that's going to be for you to do on your practice in the next video. But for now, let's just leave our code like this. If it is a banana or if it is an orange, I will create my orange splash and I will position this splash on the same position as my fruit. So now we have a splash working for my banana and for my orange, right? Good, good. So what I want us to start doing now is I want to create a timer in our game because for now we can just play forever, right? Without any, any restriction. There's nothing stopping us from playing, right? So what I want to do, I want to create a timer that will allow us to play for one minute. And then after this one minute is done, we will then go to another screen where it will show for us our game score. Cool. So first let's create this timer that will count for one minute. Let's go to the game class. And here in the game class, I'm going to create my timer. And to create a timer, we already know how to do that, right? But this time I'm going to say that this is my game dot stage timer. So the stage timer is going to start with. So if I want one minute, what is one minute? We know that it's that 60 is one second, right? So how many seconds do we need 
in one minute. So we need 60 seconds. So one second times 60, right? So this 60 times 60 is 3,600. So my stage timer is going to count for one minute, right? So now let's go on the loop tab. We have to keep reducing that timer. So here I will say that my game dot score, no, not score, uh, stage timer is going to be my game dot stage, uh, stage timer minus one. So I keep reducing my timer and if game dot stage timer is equals equals zero. So if my timer is over, then what I want to do, I want to go to a different screen in my game, right? That says game over and shows uh, our uh, score. But for now, I will just print game over. So if my timer is over, I will print for us game over here in the console window. That's all we're going to do. So to test if this is working, I would have to wait one minute but I'm not going to wait one minute. Instead, I will change this number here from 3,600 3, to, let's say, 300. And I'm going to wait five minutes, uh, five seconds, I mean, and see if it plays for me, if it prints for me the game over. There we go. Game over printed after five seconds. So I know if it is working after five seconds, it is probably going to work after one minute, right? So after one minute, it should play, it should print game over for me, but it won't stop my game yet. So what I want to do, I want to get rid of this print game over and actually bring us to another screen, a different screen in our game. And how can we do that? So if you remember from our first class, I said that the rooms are basically different screens in our game. So if we're gonna now need to use different screens, we are going to use rooms. We need to use rooms if we need to use different screens in our game, right? So the game class works like a room. You can see that when whatever I put inside here, it is gonna be in my game screen, right? So my game class is basically a room, but it's the main room of my game. And if I don't have other rooms, I cannot like uh, change between screens, right? I cannot have different screens in my game. So what we want to do is I want to uh, stop using the game as my room and I will start using rooms as rooms, right? So first let's go here on the rooms. I'll press the plus button and I'll create a room called play. So the play room is gonna be the room where we play the game, right? So for now, whenever I press play, it is executing everything I have on my game class. So it's running all this code here from the start and it's also keep running the, the code in the loop tab, right? So now what I will do, I will pass all this code I have here on my game class to my playroom. I don't want my game to do anything anymore. Now my playroom should do everything by itself, right? Because that's my room that we're gonna play the game. So here on my game start tab, I'm gonna select all this code I have inside here and I'm gonna hold control and press C. If you're Windows, if you're, if you're using Mac, you will look for command C. So control C if you're in Windows, command C if you are on Mac. So just hold control and press C. Now I'm gonna go to my playroom and here on the start tab on my playroom, I will hold control and press V or command V if you're on Mac. And that will paste my code here. So I copied my code from the game start tab and I pasted it inside my playroom start tab. So you can see that my, my code is all here on the start tab. So I can go back on my game class and I can delete all this code from here. So just do it if your code is already on the playroom start tab, like mine is. I have all my code here, right? But we still have to copy the loop tab so I'm gonna go here on my game, loop tab, select all this code, hold control, press C, right? I'm gonna go to my playroom, loop tab, and I'm gonna paste this code there using control V, right? So control C, control V, or command C, command V, depending on what which platform you're using. Okay, now we can go back on the game, loop, 
and I can delete this code from there because I have all my game now working inside my playroom, right? But now we have a problem because whenever I press play, I don't have anything in my game anymore, right? That's because our game class now is empty. I told you that the game is the main class of our game, right? And it works like a room. You can see that it has the same uh, icon as other rooms. That's because the game is a room. So whenever we press play in the game, the game class is the one that is executed. So if we don't have anything inside here, then nothing is created, right? So what we want to do is whenever the game is started, so here in the game start, I want to tell the game to run the playroom for us. So I can do that by saying room underscore set, and I will set the room called play. So I set the room play here, and whenever I press stop and play my game now, you can see that my game works perfectly again, right? That's because our game starts the playroom for us, and the playroom has all the code we had in our game before, and that works perfectly. So now, instead of printing game over, I want this code here to set a new room for me called game over. But first I have to create a new room. So I'm gonna go ahead here on rooms, press on the plus button, and I'm gonna call this room game over. Call this room game over, there it is. And now instead of printing game over, what I want this to do is I want this to room underscore set. So set the room with the name game over for me, whenever my stage timer is zero, right? But for now, our stage timer starts with one minute. Again, I will just change this to 300 so we can wait only five seconds to see if it's working or not. I stop and play my game and after five seconds, I should go to the game over room. There you go. So we know that this is the game over room because it's all black. I don't have anything in my game over room, right? So that is working. So for now, I'm just gonna uh, leave my stage timer back to 3,600, uh, 3, one minute, right? So we can keep playing the game for one minute before we go to the game over room. And later we're gonna uh, add stuff to this game over room so it looks more like a game over room and not just a black screen. And then we can press save in our game. And that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.